everyone, this is Cat Coloring. Welcome back to my channel. This time we are going to make a review of the Artex 160 colors. Uh, if you saw my art haul video the other day, I uh, showed you a lot of new coloring supplies and I uh, promised that I would make a review of these pencils and the Charisma Color Pencils and also the Derwent Metallic Pencils. But I am really excited about these art texts, so we are going to make a review of these first. So let's remove the plastic here. Ah, so we remove the lid and then we have the pencils here. That's a new, I must say. I've never seen pencils packaged like this before. Okay, so we have pencils here in three rows and also here. And ah, here they are. It's a funny way to um, store these pencils in, um, in just a casing like this. Um, I'm not quite sure that, uh, that I like this sort of storage. I think perhaps that I will actually have to, um, have to buy some other form of storage for these pencils. I know that some buy these huge pencil cases uh, for the pencils. Normally I like the tin boxes for my pencils and I usually just keep the pencils there. But um, this way of keeping them here is, um, to be quite frank, really weird. You can see how this Oh, it's weird, this one. I don't think that I'm impressed by the way that the pencils are packed like this. I am not impressed at all. I have to say that I do prefer a 10 bucks, but um, perhaps this makes them cheaper by being in a cardboard box and um, not in a tin box. Well, the first impression wasn't uh, very good, I must say. I really think that this is, and then it's all in the top here and very loose down here. And there you go, pencils all over the place. Well, I will just collect these pencils and uh, unwrap them from this and then we will continue with the review. Okay, so you can see that I have uh, gotten all of the pencils from one of these casings free and uh, then there is a card here art is a light that never dims thank you we would love to see your sharing of our products by using the following hashtag on social media hashtag art and then you can write them at csartex.com okay so that's it so compared to other coloring pencil brands that I have made reviews of, uh, like uh, Castle Art, I um, have to say that uh, Castle Art is a sure winner. Um, they have this lovely tin box and they have all of these information packed boxes with a lot of things about the colors and the pencils. And here we have a small card, thank you. And uh, share your products at hashtag Artex. Okay, well, I will keep an open mind. So these are the pencils and in this first, you can see we have a lot of uh, yellows and ochre colors, some blue colors, some pink colors. You can see here that it is a round barrel and the pencil is colored entirely or covered entirely in the uh, in paint and we have the tip here and it's blunt uh, as usual 
all new coloring pencils are sort of blunt, so we will have to sharpen them. We can just perhaps, I don't know if you can see it, it's a small yellow, not yellow, white sort of edge here. Um, we have, well, silver stars. Uh, and we have the name here of the color indigo blue. And then a number here. And if we turn it, it says art text color pencil. So this must be the number for the color. I think it says ACP 0013800 AT2115. Well, we certainly have a serial number here. It looks quite sturdy and it feels quite sturdy to hold. Uh, I have a uh, actually a polychromos here, the scarlet red. And you can see here it's the same size. You can also see here the same size lead here. So just by looking at them, they actually remind me of uh, polychromos and not Prismacolors. If you may remember from my art haul video, these pencils have a reputation of being uh, a more cheaper version of the Prismacolor pencils. This means that they are wax-based and they should be very soft and creamy. And we will put this to the test, certainly. If we remove the pencils here, I can already see I have some... This reminds me of some fluorescent colors here. A pink, a yellow and an orange. Also similar to the Prismacolors, actually. And then we have browns and grays. We have green colors here in the middle. Oh, and here come some of the light green colors. And purple colors also. And you can see here, uh, with regards to how they are kept here, I mean, thick cardboard. Oh, and it actually just... Well, it doesn't seem that sturdy to me. And then these. I mean, how are you going to use the these on a daily basis and take them in and out of this? And you can see how easily they just came out of this just before when I actually accidentally dropped some of them. This is not a good way of keeping these pencils. I have to say that. Um, it gives a bad first impression of the pencils that the casing around them is so um, bad. Well, if you look at the lid, we can see here that on the front there are some cute little drawings of uh, flowers and bunnies. It says here, uh, saturated colors, soft core, artist quality. And on the back of this, we find an overview actually of all of the pencils and the colors here. You can see that there should be a silver and a gold. We have a white and a black. And then we have all of these colors. Um, and these three. So this actually, some of the colors do actually remind me of the Prismacolor when I look at the colors. And um, have a gut feeling that some of the names too. The Indigo Blue, Chartreuse, Pale Green, we have a Pale Sage uh, with the Prismacolors, Pastel Green, this really looks like by first glance like the gray green light from the prisma colors um so uh, but um the pencils themselves if we set aside the packaging which is rather bad they do look like a solid quality of pencil <laughs> but I will have to uh, sharpen all of these pencils and then get ready for a swatching of all of the colors because you know my opinion. We have the pencil 
uh, painting here or the coating here, the color, and then we have the color of the lead and then the true color when we do this. So this looks like it's the same, but not necessarily. You can see here with this, it's the Palmer Violet, also a name I recognize from the Prismacolor, that this uh, paint here is darker than the lead here. So it will be very interesting to see the color names and especially the colors uh, if they really are matching the Prisma colors. And then, of course, we will test them. Okay, so I have now sharpened all of my pencils. And as you can see here, on my desk, they are just lying in piles here, divided by color. Um, I found out that this plastic foam or whatever it is, wasn't supposed to be in the middle of the pencils, but actually down here. But somehow during the transport, it must have moved. So that's why the pencils were so weird when I opened it. I can try to put some of the pencils down just to see how it works. Just taking all, taking all here of the yellow colors. Perhaps I should just fill up here in rows. To see how it works. Well, they do stand and uh, are not so easily moved. Um, I'm not still not quite sure that I want to keep this. Uh, I still am considering for the first time in my life to buy a pencil case to uh, keep these in. I have a feeling that it will be a lot easier also because they just cover in the rows here the barrels of the pencils so I will have to know where exactly each pencil is or I will have to look for my pencils and I don't want to spend that much time looking for the colors that I'm, that I'm, I'm going to be using um, so I think really think that I need to uh, buy some other form of containment of these pencils and I do think that a pencil case is the answer to this problem. As I sharpened them, there were absolutely no problems with these pencils sharpening. I used my Dali 133 and it was like a dream to sharpen these pencils. Here I had the cadmium yellow light and you can see how nice and sharp it is a very nice point here at the tip of the pencil. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful and so easy to sharpen. I have had issues with other pencil brands. If you have seen some of my reviews of some of the Castle Art pencils, uh, I have had difficulties and also some of the Black Widow pencils. But these pencils are so easy to sharpen. They don't break. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the barrel or the lead or anything. It's completely like a dream to to uh, to sharpen these pencils and I can drop them nothing happens I accidentally dropped some on, on the floor in the beginning of the video but nothing happened not that I recommend that you toss your pencils around don't do that but it's not like other pencil brands they break very easily absolutely nothing here another thing that i noticed um was that a lot of the names of the pencils actually match uh, the prismacolor names whether this is intentional or not uh the first 72 set of the artex pencils they were marketed as a prismacolor duplicate 
uh, or a dupe, uh, something to match Prismacolor, only much cheaper. So um, perhaps it is on purpose. Uh, on the other hand, a lot of these names like Prussian Blue and Carulian Blue and, and names like that, they um, they are also in a lot of other pencil brands and especially watercolor uh, pencils and watercolors, they use the same names. So um, perhaps it's just a coincidence. Perhaps it's just that the pencil names uh, are what they are. We have a true green here. I know that the Prismacolor also has a true green, but I think that we can compare some of the colors in the end of this video. First of all, I'm going to make um, my swatch chart. And since it's 126 um, pencils, it would take a lot of uh, time to, um, to do this. Uh, while filming it so I think that I will just swatch them and then I will let you know how it went and then we can look at the swatches of the colors before we begin testing uh, otherwise this uh, review video will be way too long okay so I am f finished with the swatching and I'm so glad that I didn't film it because it just took several hours and not just the swatching, because I'm not that slow, but of research and trying different uh, color combinations. So I first went to Art Texas' own website where they have this color chart. And uh, I soon found out that I couldn't use this one as a template for my own. Uh, they have the colors to totally mixed in between each other. They start off out with the white and silver and gold and black, and then they take some of the yellow colors, uh, ochre, and then they just go right into the blue colors, then the teal colors, then the peach colors, all of a sudden, and then back to the red colors, and then over to um, the purple colors, and then suddenly the green colors. So there wasn't any coloring sense, I think, to this color chart. It was just mixed in between each other. And uh, after um, the green colors, they turn to the gray and then suddenly uh, some of the red colors again. So it was really strange and weird. Then I looked at what other YouTubers had done. And I will not mention any names, but some of their color charts were also a bit mysterious because there were purple colors among the blue colors. And um, well, then I uh, thought that as I mentioned earlier, a lot of these names remind me of the names from the Prismacolors. So I actually, and I have it right here, looked at my, this is a very <laughs> old color chart. This is something I made when I got my Prismacolors. And uh, as you can see here that I, uh, and this is also a mess, but I haven't uh, had the time to, to um, change it. But I... Um, you know, the Prismacolors are in two trays uh, next to each other. So this one is from the left side at the top and the right side. So we have all of the creamy yellow, ochre, orange colors, and they have a lot of orange colors in the Prismacolors. Then we have uh, the red colors and then straight into the pinks and then these peachy beige sort of colors. And a lot of these uh, actually the, uh, don't exist in the Arctic's colors. Then, to make it even more confusing, <laughs> I made it from the middle of the trays, uh, the right side uh, in the middle, all the blue colors and then the green, and um, the left side in the middle, the purple colors, more of the blue colors, and at the bottom we have the rest of the green colors, the brown colors, and to make the confusion complete, all of the gray colors, and they have so many gray colors. And then, of course, the white and the metallic colors. But I thought, why not make this swatch chart like this Prismacolor chart? So I went for it, and that's why it took so long. So 
if we compare them, and I will compare them now, you can see that it was actually, I think, a good thing that I swatched them like the Prismacolors. Because if we have them here almost side by side, I do hope that you can see it. We have the cream here. And the cream in the art text is much more yellow than the cream here. But as soon as we turn to the eggshell, we can see that the cadmium orange light is actually the same color. A little bit lighter, but not much. The ginger root, you can see, is also quite similar. Perhaps a little bit lighter here with the art text pencils. The artichoke and the old gold are a match. The neon yellow and fluorescent yellow also a match. Deco yellow matches the light yellow here. I know that they're here in the Hansa yellow light. Uh, there's actually a miscoloration because there was a little red dot in the lead of the pencil. And uh, that's why there's a bit of a red color here. Quite annoying. Um, but you can see that the Hansa yellow light matches the lemon yellow, the canary yellow. They are a match. If we move on to the oranges, uh, you can see here yellowed orange and here almost the same color. I actually think that if I turn out my light, you can see that it is the same color. Perhaps the yellowed orange in the Arctic is a little bit darker, but not by much. The jasmine here and here, the jasmine in the Arctic is also a bit lighter uh, and also unfortunately had some a little bit of a discoloration, but I don't know if it was uh, from another pencil or if it was in the lead. It was difficult to decide. A yellow ochre, the same color, Spanish orange. This one is deeper in the color and brighter. It's a more toned, muted, a more muted tone here in the um, chromium yellow deep. Goldenrod, same color, perhaps a little bit brighter here. The sunburst yellow, same color. Uh, sand I have down here. Pretty much the same color, perhaps a little bit more yellow here in the Arctic. I placed the cadmium yellow light here is um, not a, um, it doesn't resemble any of the uh, Prisma colors, so it's a color for itself, this one. Um, and as I said, they don't have a lot of orange colors uh, in uh, the Arctic set, but we can see that the orange matches the orange here. I think the orange. In Prismacolor could be a little bit darker, but not by much. The neon orange and fluorescent orange. Oh my god, that's a difficult word. Fluorescent. Also a match. Pale vermilion, a match. No pumpkin orange, but the cadmium orange hue and the cadmium orange deep, a match. This could be just a little bit darker in the Prismacolor, but otherwise, uh, the poppy red, a match. Carmine red. I think it's a bit more bright than the carmine red here. Um, the permanent red, scarlet red, fine match, no match for scarlet lake. But if we move on to crimson red, I hope you can see it here. Um, if I put it down here, you can see it. Crimson red. I think that actually the art text crimson red is a bit brighter. Then the crimson red uh, from the Prismacolor, crimson lake, a match. Pomegranate, perylene violet, almost a match. I think there is more um, purple color in the pomegranate than the perylene violet. Uh, magenta, a match. Rose red and process red, a match. Mulberry, a match. Opera pink and neon pink, match. Baker Miller pink, hot pink, a match. And I will continue because they do really match in the colors. Pink and pink, dark salmon, nectar, blush pink, blush pink. We don't have any equivalent of the pink rose, which, which has some sort of a very, very weak uh, lilac in it. But the deco rose and the seashell pink, almost a match. I think the seashell pink is perhaps a little more strong in the color. Peach Puff, Deco Pink, Light Peach, a match also. Uh, camel, the closest thing to Camel is the Beige Sienna. It's a little bit darker. We have the Peach here. 
I think the peach in the Prismacolor is just a little bit darker than the peach uh, in the Arctex. Otherwise, a match beige and beige, also a match and Venetian red and raspberry, a very close match. I think the Venetian red perhaps has a little bit of more brown in it than the raspberry. It's more red. So um, those were all of the red colors. If we turn to the blue colors, uh, there's no real match for the light Caribbean blue. But the deep sky blue is um, the, what can we say, lightest, brightest of these uh, light blue colors. The Mediterranean blue is quite a match to the Helio turquoise here. Peacock blue is a match. Uh, and then we have the very light colors and they are not easy that easy to match because there are more light blue colors in the Prismacolor set than in this Artex set. But if we look at the powder blue and the pastel blue, they are a very close match. Uh, Caribbean Sea uh, and Periwinkle are some sort of more grayish colors and they don't quite match the cloud blue and helio turquoise light, but it's the closest to um, gray bluish colors I could find in the Arctic uh, selection. Then we have the blue lake. There's actually no match for the cloud blue, by the way. It says cloud blue here, but it's more like a dark version of the Caribbean Sea. And the helio turquoise light is a uh, sort of more brighter version of the periwinkle, I have to say, and more uh, teal color in this also. But the blue lake and blue slate, we have the light cerulean blue and the cornflower blue. I think that the blue slate and cornflower blue are the closest match. This is perhaps just a little bit darker. The blue lake and the light cerulean blue, they are not a match. But the light cerulean blue and cornflower blue uh, are a very good match here together uh, in this color chart with the art text because this is just a little bit darker than the cornflower blue as the blue lake is a little bit darker than the blue slate. The indigo blue and match non-photo blue a match to the cobalt teal blue. This is perhaps just a little bit lighter, but um, it also depends on the pressure. Uh, if we move on, the light aqua here and the light aqua here, also a very good match. I think that this color is perhaps just a little more bright in the Prisma colors. And then we have the aquamarine and jade blue. They are a match. Cobalt turquoise and ocean green, a match. Again, depending on the pressure, I pressed very hard here, so it seems darker. But if I pressed really hard here, I think that they would uh, match. Light green matches lime green here with the Artex parrot green. Here, not quite the same color. It's brighter here with the parrot green. A gray green light matches the pastel green, the pale sage matches the pale green. I think the pale green is perhaps a little bit lighter, uh, but not by much. Yellow chartreuse matches lemon yellow. And we have chartreuse and chartreuse, and this chartreuse is more um, greenish than in the lime peelish sort of way, like the Prisma color. So it's definitely lighter. And uh, lime peel, a good match actually, with these two colors. Um, moss green and army green, a cl quite close match. I can't decide quite if moss green is a little bit darker than the army green or if it's the other way around. No match for green ochre. But spring green and apple green, also good match. Uh, the apple green is darker in the Prisma color set. But the spring green, a really good match. So if we continue with the green colors, I hope that you can see this. We can see that the sap green light and pea green, they are not a match. Uh, but the closest thing to it, because you can see here, the sap green light is a more muted tone and the pea green is more brighter. But the asparagus green and kelly green are actually a match. The kelly green a little bit darker but otherwise a good match. True green and true green, a match. Grass green and grass green, a match. I think um, I think that the grass green in the Arctic is just a little bit brighter. 
than the Prismacolor set. Olive green, also a match. Prussian green, almost a match to chromium oxide green. I think that uh, this one is... Oh, it's difficult. Not darker, perhaps a little more bright green in it. The dark green, also a good match. And um, the fern green and the kelp green, a good match. Sandbar brown and antique brass, also a match. Sepia and sepia, match. No match for marine green, but you can say that kelp green and marine green are also colors close to each other. So if you don't press too hard, perhaps fern green could go for both colors. Uh, turquoise gray, a match for the Keladon green. Uh, no match from you to turquoise, but the uh, peacock green and the emerald are a very, very close match. I think that this one is a little bit brighter than the peacock green here in the Prismacolors. And then I place the dark teal here. Uh, so there's no uh, Artex substitute for the muted turquoise and there are no Prismacolor alternatives to the Artex dark teal. Then we have putty beige and Bavarian cream. A good match. Bavarian cream perhaps a little bit lighter, but not by much. Light umber. The light umber in the Prismacolor is more bright than this one. This is a bit more muted, but otherwise fine. No match for chocolate. Burnt ochre. Uh, and burnt ochre here. Um, I have placed the iron oxide brown here. Um, it doesn't match the chocolate, but I think that it made sense to place it here between these two colors, because then we move on to sienna brown, and they are also a match. Um, terracotta in the art text is way more red than brown. So beware when you use it, because this is way more dark red than actual brown color, like in the Prismacolor set. Uh, I have placed the Mars brown here. It is a bit darker than the henna and has more brown in it than the henna. But if you don't lay as much pressure on it, it can actually almost go for the same color. Uh, and uh, and then I have placed the burnt umber here. There's no burnt umber in the Prismacolor set, so I place it here because it's also red-brown and it's darker than the Mars brown. The Tuscan red here, um, not an exact match. This is more red and this is more brownish red. And we have the Espresso and the Van Dyke brown. I didn't press very hard, I can tell, but if I did, they would be a match. Uh, if because this looks darker now on the espresso, but if I pressed harder with the Van Dyke brown here in the Arctic, I think it would be the exact same color. And then the dark umber, of course, also a match. And then we turn to the um, purple colors. No match for mahogany. But the dark purple and the dark purple here, um, quite a match. Perhaps a little bit darker in the Prisma colors, but not by much, I can tell you. No match for black raspberry uh, or, I don't know, black cherry. I have actually put the quinacridone violet and mayan violet here before I went to the more lilac and violet tones uh, because they were suited here. If you want to compare black cherry and quinacridone violet, I have to say this is way darker and has more blue in it. These are really lighter versions of this uh, dark purple color. This has more red in it, this has less red, and this has more blue in it. But if we turn here to the violet colors, the wisteria and great lavender, also a match lavender and lavender, and this is a nice surprise because I didn't stock up on the lavender and lilac before they disappeared and was replaced by, uh, was it amethyst? And I cannot remember the last one. So I only have the one lavender and one lilac that I have in my Prismacolor set. So I was very nice surprised when I found out that the lavender and lilac of the Artex set are such a good match to the Prismacolor set. Really a good match. So you can use those instead of the Prismacolors if they're, they're used up and you don't have anything else. 
orchid purple, a beautiful color. Not quite a match for the Dahlia purple. It's a bit lighter, but almost. Palmer violet, almost a close, it's a very close match. The Palmer violet in the Prismacolor is a bit darker than the one in the Artex. Uh, ultramarine violet are placed here. Um, it doesn't have an equivalent in the Prismacolor set, but black grape also here doesn't have an equivalent in the Artex set. So, um, oh, wait, it does. Our aubergine purple and black grape actually matches. I have forgotten that. So we do have a match here. And the dioxazine purple hue matches the cobalt violet perfectly. Violet and violet, perfect match. Imperial violet, perfect match. And then we have the blue violet lake and pigeon blue. And it's not an exact match, but almost. I think that the pigeon blue in the Arctic is a bit more grayish blue violet, whereas the blue violet lake is blue violet. Then we have the violet blue, a match. Uh, in Danthrone blue, it's darker in the Prismacolor set. Um, and we don't have a, quite a match. And we can see the Prussian blue is the darkest of the blue colors here. So I placed it here. Then we have the French ultramarine, also quite a dark color. Um, and it actually matches the ultramarine here from the Prismacolor set, whereas the cobalt blue hue, hue, hue matches the ultramarine. And I do think that this ultramarine here in the Arctic is actually a bit brighter uh, and more beautiful than the cobalt blue hue here in the Prismacolor set. Then we have China blue. It actually matches almost, almost to the Delft blue. I think the Delft blue is perhaps a bit more bright. Copenhagen blue, manganese blue. The Copenhagen blue is has a bit more greenish to it than the manganese blue. The Copenhagen blue down here, darker than the Copenhagen blue here. We don't have an electric blue uh, in the Arctic or, or anything to match the electric blue here. But you can see here, I actually think that the denim blue and the Copenhagen blue Denim blue from Prismacolor and Copenhagen blue here. They are quite a good match to each other. And then we have the true blue. They are also a match. But we have also a color here called ocean blue. And I don't think that it actually matches anything in the Prismacolor set. So this is also an original art text color. And then we have the Cerulean blue here and here. And these colors also match from set to set. And then we just have the few left colors. Uh, luckily, I'm glad they are all, almost any colors, uh, gray colors in this set, because I think that the Prisma colors has way too many gray colors, and I'm not very fond of gray colors. The dark brown, you can see here, is a bit darker in the Artex set, but also quite a good match. The warm gray, 20% uh, here, matches the warm gray 10% in the Prismacolor set. And the warm gray 50% matches, um, actually matches the warm gray 50%. Or was it the 70? It's a match between one of these two colors, dependent on the pressure I can see. And the warm gray 70% actually matches the, okay, this matches the warm gray 90% here. The cool gray 20%. Oh, this is difficult because I didn't press too hard, but it certainly doesn't match the 10%. I actually think that it does. It looks like it actually matches either the cool gray 20% or the 30%. And the 50% actually matches the gray, cool gray 50%. And the cool gray 70% matches the cool gray 70%. So the cool grays actually match the colors of the Prisma colors uh, better than the warm colors here, the warm gray colors. It's a different color they match. Then we have the black, of course. And then we have an interesting thing because the yellowish gray I have placed here because it's an exact match of the French gray 10%. 
but it's the only color of the French gray colors that we have in this set. The cadet blue matches the slate gray, you can see it's the exact same color. And then we have the white and the silver, and uh, the gold is not a match. The gold actually uh, is more of a match of the Prismacolor bronze, but it's because it's a very warm golden color and the metallic gold in the Prismacolor set, it's actually the only color I really dislike because it's ugly. It doesn't look like gold. It looks like a very dusty uh, sort of light umber brown color. It's not pretty. It really isn't. But this gold here in the Artex set is actually quite pretty. So these are the Artex colors. And as you can see, most of the colors, perhaps up to 90%, between 80 and 90%, actually do match the Prisma colors. They do. But do they perform like the Prisma colors? Well, we are about to find out because now we're going to test them. Okay, time for testing. So the first book is uh, Den Magiske Jungle by Johanna Besford. And you know that I have this page that I always use with all of the leaves that I can't seem to find when I need it. Oh my. Ah, here it was. So this double page with all of these leaves uh, is a perfect place to test different coloring pencil brands to see how they uh, work. Unfortunately, I haven't written everything down. So uh, right now, I um, remember that this and this leaf here, it was Prismacolor. This was the Castle Art. And that was... Mm, can't read. That was the Black Widows and Black Widows and also Black Widows. Different sets. I think that this was the Castle Art Metallics, actually. Or the Pastel Tints. I think it was the Pastel Tints, actually. Yeah, it was. So perhaps I should have written it down. Well, anyway, we are also going to be testing our Optex uh, pencils in this one. So I am... Um, well... I have put them in order here in these, but I still don't think that this is the optimal way of having the pencils. So um, I think I'm just going to take some random pencils here. The Chromium Oxide Green and uh, a lighter cut. No, that was the grass green. Oh my. It's much easier if these were in a pencil case then. Asparagus green. So the chromium oxide green and asparagus green. And then actually I think that I want the... Oh. And that's difficult. The rest of the green colors are here. No. It's really not an optimal way of keeping these pencils. So the pastel green and asparagus green and the chromium oxide green. Okay, so three colors, dark, middle <coughs> and light. Um, and I think that I just want to take a um, random leaf. So why don't I take this leaf? I think that I want the... I actually think that I want the dark color to be these. Just to make something different. So I just use the chromium oxide green to color these. So do they feel buttery and creamy? Well, uh, I can feel it's. Uh, I think that the tip is hard. I can feel it's hard, sort of like a, and and at the same time a bit soft. This reminds me actually. Let me just take this one, and I am um, not that I'm going to use my uh, polychromos, but um, I have to try it on this. So I will just color this 
with some blue. This is a Polychromos from Faber-Castell. So when I hold it in my hand, I get the same feeling like when I'm holding these. It's the same thickness. So it's it really reminds me of Polychromos when I hold the pencil. So if I just color here, this is a harder tip than the Prismacolors. But it's not scratchy, the Polychromos. And it lays down then. It's not quite the same. It's hard, but it feels soft when you lay them down on the paper, when you color with these. So the tip is hard, or has a hardness in it that reminds me of the Polychromos, but when you color with it, it's more soft, to put it like that. Okay, so I am just going to layer this asparagus green here in the middle. That was one layer, and then we take the pastel green. and add one layer here. That was one layer. And one layer, you can clearly see the paper through the color. So um, let's stick to this area, one layer, then this area, two layers. So I'm going to lay down another layer here and also here. You can still see some of the paper, but you can also see that the color in the second layer covers a lot more. Let's try this area with three layers. So first a second layer. and a second layer here. And a third layer here. And here. clearly see the difference. So um, if we try this one with four layers, that was two layers. And Three layers, and four layers, So one layer here, you can see a lot of the paper, it's almost whitish still here. And two layers, then we can see that the color lays down on the paper. Three layers, a bit darker in the color, but I actually still can see a lot of the white of the paper with three layers. And the fourth here, it gets darker, but I can still see the paper. Sometimes I have a feeling that it's the paper in this Johanna Besford book 
uh, that's the problem and not the pencils. Let's try five layers up here. Okay, that was two layers. That was three layers. Four layers. And five layers. Ah, it's not that easy around the edges. No, you can see the difference. White. Still some white, <coughs> lesser white. And the fifth layer, now it's covered. So five layers in this book. And look here, it looks like there was some sort of a, um, another color came in. I think it's again the lead in these. It's like that there are some small faults in the lead with another color that just comes in. I don't know if it's a, co a coincidence or if it's really in the pencils, but I am beginning to suspect that it is in the pencils and the lead here. Well, when you buy cheaper pencils, then this is the result. So this book, Johanna Bassford, coloring book paper, five layers, and then you have covered the paper with these art texts. So let's see what happens when we switch paper to the one in Twilight Garden. Okay, Twilight Garden. As I have said in many of my recent re reviews, the paper in this is different than the paper in Johanna Bassford books. Her paper is very smooth and uh, very white. This paper has a more creamy tone to it. And it is actually, if you can hear the sound, I'm just comparing to the paper in Johanna Bassford books. And then this one is not quite as smooth as the paper uh, in her book. So this paper, a little bit more coarse, but not really coarse. Not like uh, Hannah Carlson books. And another tone. This is my test page um, in this book and I will just select some, again, random colors and then I think that I want to um, color this flower over here. And uh, well, this one was blue and I have used some pinks. I actually think that I want some uh, yellow with this flower. So, how about the light yellow? and the canary yellow and then we take the apple green for the leaves here and the stem so the light yellow and you can see here we have one two three four petals this means one two three four layers So I will give them each one layer with the light yellow and one layer here with the canary yellow. Actually, I should have switched the colors, but well, it is as it is. So let's look at this see it here it actually covers quite good for just one layer here if you remember how much white there was in the Johanna Bassford book the magical jungle this paper is covered much much more with the these pencils 
And this has also been the case with the castle art Pestletons and the Black Widow Dragon uh, set. And actually also the castle art metallics uh, pencils. It's like this paper uh, in Maria Trolle books. It's just much easier to cover with just only a few layers than in uh, the Johanna Besford books, I have to say. It's a bit weird, but uh, there you have it. So that was one layer. Then I add a second layer here to the remaining petals. And I have a light pressure. And uh, the second layer can actually see, I hope you can see that it covers so much more. The um, canary yellow gets a bit deeper here with one more layer, with two layers here, then with one layer here. There is <coughs> still some white here. You will have to excuse me coughing, uh, but I have a cold right now, so. Um, but it covers actually quite well after the second layer. So we will add a third layer here to the last two petals of both colors. And you can see here the first layer. We can see some white, the second layer also, and the third layer, I cannot see any white left. I simply cannot see it. I will just, for the sake of this test, add a fourth layer to the last petal. And you can see that there is hardly any difference between the third and the fourth petal here. I think that perhaps the color is a little bit deeper with the fourth layer, but you don't have to have the fourth layer because the third layer covers the paper. That is why it's so easy to color in Maria Torres' books. They don't have to layer as much. All of these different pencil brands, the Castle Art, Black Widow, and now Artex. I will have to write down that this is Artex, or else I will forget it. It's just much, much easier to color on this sort of paper than the paper in Johanna Bassford books. Not that it can't be colored, but um, I really think that um, it's just much easier and it doesn't require as much layering in these books as in Johanna Bassford books. So I will just add the remaining layers here so that this beautiful flower is finished. And just for the sake of it, let's color these two with the dark one and then the light yellow here. Ah! And then it's done. And then I wanted the apple green, but I actually think that I want another color. So I will grab the chromium oxide green also, along with the apple, the apple yellow. And uh, I think that I will start with the dark color. So... Now I will see how they blend. I actually think that they blend well in this book also. You can see the blending here with the flowers. <laughs> I actually think that in the Johanna Bassford book, in The Magical Jungle, it was uh, way more difficult to blend the colors, uh, the asparagus green and that uh, pastel green. It was like there was a huge transition between the colors. You can clearly see the difference. So now I'm coloring on top of the chromium oxide green with the apple green. And look at it. It's really easy here to just blend the colors together. 
I won't even bother with a lot of layers because we already know how the layering is in this book. So I just wanted to color this flower so it's finished. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And then just a bit of the dark one here. But I have to say that once you have laid down the color and uh, mixed it to color on top of it again, I think it's a bit more difficult with these colors than the Prisma colors. But you can see here the result, very beautiful. And the colors are very bright and shiny. I know that these are pastel tints and metallics, but look here at the black widow dragon here that flower you can see here that the art text is also as bright as the black widow pencils very bright and shiny i have to say that so um three layers you can add a fourth layer in um Maria Trolles uh, books here with the Artex, but you really don't need the fourth layer. And if you're happy with two layers, it's also going to work. And blending here, so easy on this paper. So the last test is in one of my Hannah Carlson books, and that is because Johanna Besford, Maria Troll and Hannah Carlson are the books that I primarily use at the moment so it makes sense for me to test my new pencils in these books and i have here seasons by hannah carlson and i have found this page and this is going to be my test page i have actually struggled just going to write test page here i have struggled trying to find um, a page in her books because i think that so many of her pages are these huge, beautiful, beautiful designs. But when I have a test page, I would really much like it to be smaller things so that I don't have to, to color an entire page when I test my pencils, but just a smaller item here. So uh, I have this beautiful page here and uh, we have different items here and all of them are very suitable for testing pencils. So um, now I just have to do the very difficult task by choosing what do I want to color. And I have colored a leaf and I have uh, colored a flower. So um, I actually think that I want to color something different on this page. So this, uh, I have no idea what it is, but it reminds me of an Easter egg. And it's actually in the spring section of the you can see here seeds sunbeams it starts with the spring drawing so i think oh, this is an easter egg so, so rose red and baker miller pink and then i think i want the white here so these three colors and if you want the equivalent of these in the uh, prisma color it's the hot pink and the processed red and the white so um I am fairly confident that I know how these colors will work. I think that I will use the rose red here to color the egg with. And this is just one layer. And you can see that it's quite easy to put the color down on the paper. So nothing, nothing fancy here. Just one layer. And you can see, and I don't, don't even have to get the book up to the camera, you can see the white of the paper. So it doesn't cover with just one layer. Um, let's look at uh, one of these dots here and color this one 
with one layer of the Baker Miller pink. You can still see it. So I will take this one and I will give it two layers and also these two and leave this as one layer. So two layers, one layer, you can clearly see the white of the paper. Two layers, you can still see some white, but the color is getting clearer and you can't see as much of the white as before. So I will give this one a third layer and also this one. So one, two, three, and three. And the third layer you can see here with the big one, a little bit of white left, but nothing compared to two layers and one layer. So let me give this a fourth layer. One, two, three, four. Oh, I'm not sure that there's any difference between the third and the fourth layer. I could have forgotten that one. It's a little bit of white there. So I think that three or four layers in this book, this paper, this paper is a bit more coarse than the paper in uh, The Magical Jungle. And a little bit more coarse than in the Maria Trolle book, but it's almost the same. And it's also this sort of creamy tone to the paper, like in Maria Trolle's book, Twilight Garden. So the paper is almost similar, but a little bit coarser than the paper in Maria Trolle's book. Okay. I will give this a fifth layer just to be sure. Well, the fifth layer, then it's completely covered. Well, I am actually not sure. I'm thinking that I want to take this. So one layer, the same. Two layers. Three layers. Oh, four layers. Yeah, there is a little bit of a difference between the fourth and the fifth layer. The fifth layer is completely, completely covered. And the fourth, there is still a little bit of the paper shining through. So this is a surprise because usually with the other pencils I have tested in uh, Hannah Carlson books, they usually require a layer less than in Maria Tolles books. With uh, the Black Widows, uh, different Black Widows I have tested. And also with the, uh, I think it was the Castle Art uh, pastel tints. But here with the art text, I will have to write it down or I will forget it. Um. It's actually five layers. And that was what I used in Johanna Passford books. This is a complete surprise. That's why I was so silent. I'm actually quite stunned. Because usually the coloring pencils, I use different brands, but they all lay down so well and quickly in this book. I have actually um, used the, the castle arts for this one I posted for St. Patrick's Day. And... You can see here the castle art. I was really, really uh, rough on them in my review, which uh, was a really critical review of the castle arts I did a couple of months ago because they layered down so badly in her book. It took seven or eight layers to just cover most of the tooth of the paper and the white also um, in uh, the magical jungle. But this one, I think I three layers tops. Most of this is actually done with two layers, the background here 
with two layers and the leaves also. I think I gave it three layers with the big flowers, but otherwise two layers. And now five layers here. This is a complete surprise for me. It, it, I don't even use, when I use my Prisma colors in her books, I don't even layer with five layers and then it's covered. This is a complete surprise to me. Uh, so this is actually a coloring book where the Artex is not as good as the, as the other coloring pencil brands I use. Both the Black Widows and the Prismacolors and the Castle Arts are way better in this book on this sort of paper than the Artex. I am really, really stunned. I must say I did not expect this, but this is why I do testing in different coloring books when I uh, test my coloring pencils. So five layers. Well, the white pencil here is much harder than the Prisma color pencil, the white there. So I don't think that, um, I don't think that the Artex, uh, the white is uh, as good a, um, Blender medium, if you can see that, as a white one in the Prisma color set. And I think that actually, I haven't used them for so long, but I have a sneaking suspicion that it is a, a bit more difficult to blend the colors into each other with the art text than the Prisma colors. I think it's not quite as easy as some people on uh, on the internet have said, both on YouTube and what other places I have seen. Well, we got a nice pink Easter egg, at least, out of this, but a complete surprise with five layers. Well, that was the testing. And now for a discussion and conclusion of this review of the Artex pencils. Okay, so we are now at the final end of this review. And if we had to look at the uh, pros, I have to say the colors are really, really beautiful in this Artex set. Uh, the pigment is uh, surprisingly strong in these pencils, considering that they are actually quite cheaper than uh, the Prismacolors, more about the price later. But the pigment lays down very strong and you don't have to press very hard. The color just comes down and lays beautifully on the pages on every sort of paper that you use. They are very easy to lay down. Uh, there are a lot of colors, and I can say that most of the colors, as you have seen early on in the video, they actually match the Prisma color colors, the color range in them. Um, about the layering, I think that in some coloring books or oh, on some paper, the layering is uh, actually better than in other. Uh, coloring books, you can see that if the paper is white and very smooth, as it was the case in uh, The Magical Jungle by Johanna Besford, it's not as easy to lay down. You have to layer several times, up to five times, to sort of cover the paper and the tooth of the paper uh, before it's it's full. If you, uh, on the other hand, use paper that is a bit coarser and has a more creamy tone, like in the books by Maria Trolle, then it only takes three layers and then the color is down on the paper, you cannot see the white of the paper, and it's actually full. A big surprise was that the more coarser paper in the Hannah Carlson coloring book actually also took five layers. So you will have to experiment with these pencils to try to find out what, how many layers you need in the coloring books uh, or you use for yourself. But actually, considering it all, other coloring pencil brands you also have to layer down. Uh, so it, I don't think it's a problem that there is a difference between three and five layers. Um, so I think it's all right. Uh, the price is a huge pro uh, on this uh, on these pencils. The And I have it written here on a paper. So if you hear a strange noise, it's the paper. The price, I bought these from Amazon Germany and they were 68 um, euros. 
68.26 euros if you have to be extremely correct but uh, at the time being they are sold out on the german amazon you cannot buy them here uh, on the german amazon um on the us amazon you can um you can buy it and it's uh 49.98 well i would say 50 dollars for uh, this set. The Prisma colors, however, you can buy them both on Amazon Germany and Amazon U uh, US. If you buy them on the German Amazon, it's almost 300 euros for the Prisma color 150 set. It's 294.11 uh, euros. So if you want to. Um, buy them on the US Amazon instead it's 100 and uh, it, they are actually on sale right now so uh, right now you can get them for 125.69 US dollars but usually the price is 141.14 dollars so if you buy them in America on the uh, American Amazon you can save 91 dollars and 16 cents by buying these Optex instead of the Prismacolors if you live in Europe and you buy the Arctex instead of the Prismacolors, you will actually save 200, almost 226 euros. And that's a huge uh, price difference. So these are way cheaper than the Prismacolors. Now, then we have to remember that some of these pencils, they did have some sort of little fault in the in the lead, in the core and the lead, so that there was a bit of a miscoloring with a couple of uh, the lighter colors, uh, one of the yellow colors, I think it was the Hansa Lemon, uh, Hansa Yellow Light, and then the Jasmine. Um, so there is with some of the pencil, there could be some of these flaws. But I have the Prisma colors, and I, as I've told in another video, at, in my spring green, I also have a flaw there. I have a little red dot, so uh, if I color with the spring green in a certain direction, it's green and red, and not just green. So expensive and cheap pencils, this can happen to all sorts of pencils. So I don't think that that's an argument that, oh, you will find all of these faults in the cheaper pencils, because they are also in the more expensive pencils. Uh, the cons. I don't think that this uh, storage packaging is all right. The foam is very loose, at least in this one I have here. And um, you can see here that I tried to uh, close it again and it doesn't really work now that the pencils uh, have been moved around. So I will definitely need another sort of, um, of storage uh, for these pencils. I also think that the blending of these pencil, it really depends on the paper. In the Johanna Bassford book, I don't think it was a good blending there. Um, but in the Maria Trolle book, it was actually quite nice. So I think that uh, with the layering as well as the blending, the blending really depends on the paper, but I am not that impressed with the blending abilities of these yet. I have to work more with them to be more convinced that they blend. They, I don't think that they blend as easily as the Prismacolors. And I also don't think that they are as soft and smooth as the Prismacolors. I know that some say they are, but the tip is actually hard. You can feel it, but but when they touch the paper, it's not as hard as a um, a polychromos uh, from Faber Castell. Then they soften a bit, but they are certainly not as soft and creamy as the Prisma colors. I don't think that any other pencils are as soft and and uh, creamy as the Prisma colors. I have to say. So are these the new Prisma colors? Because they are a color match most of the colors to the Prisma colors. They are cheap. They have a, a actually a high pigment uh, for a cheap pencil, and they are easy to work with. Uh, mostly easy, I would say. Uh, lay down easily, at least on the paper. Well, I love my Prisma colors. Um, I don't know if I would recommend these and say these are the new Prisma colors. I would rather say buy these Artex pencils if not necessarily as an alternative to Prisma colors, but actually to get 
a big set of coloring pencils that work. These are cheap and they get the job done. They lay down easily, they have a great pigment, and I think that they have a higher pigment than a lot of other uh, cheaper pencil brands. I have the Stettler Aerosoft, and I also have the Stettler Design Journey. I like my Design Journey, but I have to admit, these are more pigmented and actually easier to work with than the uh, Stettler Design Journey. They really are, and I have uh, actually recommended the Stettel Design Journey to many new colorists, but I think I will have to change my recommendations to new colorists because I think that these art text is actually quite a good beginner pencil um, to get the job done and to have beautiful pigmented colors. So if you buy the art text, don't buy them because you, you want something as the Christmas, but you can't afford it. Buy them in their own right. And if you want the Prismacolors, then save up and buy them. Because it's not the same experience to work with these as with the Prismacolors. They are not as soft and buttery and creamy and uh, move around on the page as the Prismacolors do. It's really not that much alike, although the colors do match. This has been a review of the Artex 126 coloring pencils. I hope that you have uh, enjoyed this review and I hope that you can use this review to make up your mind whether or not you would like to uh, get these pencils either as a beginner colorist or an experienced colorist. I also hope that you will like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, and then I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Happy coloring. Bye.